Hello, and welcome to the tutorial series for TIBCO Data Virtualization, or TDV. In this tutorial, we discuss REST client access to TDV. Note that tutorials are not meant to be comprehensive training modules. Instead, they demonstrate a very basic use case that can be built quickly and easily. However, the data virtualization knowledge base contains additional information that will help you learn more and go deeper. Additional resources in the knowledge base include resources used to build the tutorial, such as data virtualization archive files, data source files, and a document version of this tutorial. Additional information, including documentation and training materials. Here is our agenda. We begin by defining TDV REST clients and outlining their importance in data virtualization projects. Next, we demonstrate the basics of REST client access to TDV. Finally, we summarize the contents of this tutorial. Let's begin by discussing what REST clients are and why they are important for data virtualization. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. RESTful web services provide a uniform interface to web resources that is based on URIs. RESTful web services permit clients to manipulate textual representations of web resources. These textual representations can be in any format, but are most commonly rendered as XML or JSON. The actions that can be performed on resources are indicated by HTTP verbs, such as get, post, put, and delete. RESTful web services are typically human-readable and self-describing. RESTful web services are stateless, and unlike SOAP services, there is no explicit contract definition. REST is important to our customers because it is an extremely popular protocol for web services. Many software developers consider it to be a universal API for client-server communication over networks. Next, let's walk through a very basic demo of REST client connectivity in TDV. Here is the business problem that we illustrate in this demo. Client software makes REST calls to TDV in order to retrieve federated data for presentation. We will use TDV's REST capabilities to enable this client access. You can easily build the resources needed for this tutorial from scratch. However, users may import a CAR file that is available with the additional resources that accompany this tutorial. The tutorial requires a single stored procedure, which is shown here. In general, it is not a good practice to publish an entire view as a web service because the result could be extremely large. Therefore, we use this simple stored procedure to force the consumer to filter the data request. The procedure defines a single input parameter that accepts all or part of a company name. It provides a simple filtering capability to ensure that the entire view is not returned in the web service response. The procedure uses this parameter to filter results from the composite view resource that is delivered with TDV in the examples folder. To complete our preparation, we publish this resource as a web service using the service name REST Client Tutorial and the operation CUST Order. Now we are ready to begin the demo. Open the published web service endpoint and click the REST tab. On the center panel, make sure the CUST order operation is selected. Scroll down to endpoint URLs. TDV lets us call the web service in four different ways. We can choose HTTP or HTTPS as the transport and JSON or XML as the data format. Double click the URL for HTTP XML and it is placed on the clipboard. Our first client test is very simple. Just paste the URL into a browser. Note that the URL contains a template for the filter parameter. The value you must supply is represented by the text in curly braces. Enter a value for the filter and execute the URL. Authenticate with a valid TDV username and password, and data is returned. Our web service is working correctly. However, web developers may want to automate the authentication process in their client software. Let's see how to do that next. 
For this demo, we will demonstrate three different tools that may be used to provide REST client connectivity to TDV. For our first example, we will use a freeware utility program called SOAPUI. We right-click Projects in the Namespace area and select New REST Project. We paste the HTTP XML URL from TDV into the URI field and replace the template value in curly braces with an actual value. Click OK. The project appears in the Navigator pane of SOAP UI, and the details appear in the Editor pane. Click the Run button to submit the request. The request runs, but it returns an unauthorized error. That's because we haven't defined the authorization header that will replace the manual authentication step we used in the browser test. To define the authorization header, click Auth at the bottom of the editor pane. Select Add New Authorization from the dropdown. Select Basic and enter a valid TDV username and password. Now run the request again and data is returned successfully. The authorization header takes the place of the manual challenge we used when we called the service from a browser. On the SOAP UI request pane, click RAW to see how the authorization header is constructed. Its name is authorization, and its contents consists of the word basic, followed by a space, followed by the username and password converted to base64 format. Another way to test client access is to use curl, which is a popular freeware command line utility and programming library. After installing curl, you can run it from the command line. Specify the get verb, the username and password, and the URL. The data is returned. Finally, let's test access to the web service using the Chrome Advanced REST Client. This is a Chrome extension that can be installed from the Chrome App Store, but it is launched from a desktop shortcut, not from the browser. Enter the URL for the web service, make sure the get verb is selected, and click Add Header. Begin typing the word authorization in the header name field, and you will be able to select it from the list that appears. Now click the Edit button for the header value. Enter the username and password and click Select. The value is converted to Base64. Click Send and the data is returned. We have tested REST client access to TDV using SOAP UI, CURL, and the Chrome Advanced REST Client. Our demo is complete. Let's summarize what we have seen in this tutorial. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. RESTful web services provide a uniform interface to web resources that is based on URIs. RESTful web services permit clients to manipulate textual representations of web resources. These textual representations can be in any format, but are most commonly rendered as XML or JSON. The actions that can be performed on resources are indicated by HTTP verbs such as get, post, put, and delete. RESTful web services are typically human-readable and self-describing. RESTful web services are stateless, and unlike SOAP services, there is no explicit contract definition. REST is important to our customers because it is an extremely popular protocol for web services. Many software developers consider it to be a universal API for client-server communication over networks. As you work with REST client access and TDV, keep these key takeaways in mind. When you publish a TDV resource as a web service, both REST and SOAP access are automatically enabled. For RESTful web services, you can choose HTTP or HTTPS transport, and you can choose XML or JSON data formats. After completing this tutorial, you are ready to make your work available to external clients. Use your learning from this tutorial to create RESTful client connections to TDV. Leverage your knowledge to use both XML and JSON data formats. Use other tutorials to learn how to explore additional client protocols, such as SOAP, JDBC, 
ODBC, ADO.net, and OData. Thank you.